uh, any thoughts or impressions on the initial deployment of Verizon's 5G ultra wideband networking? Maybe some thoughts on how you see it today, how you perceive it to maybe maybe play out in the future the micro, with a microscope. <laughs> so what I mean is, you have millimeter wave, right? So that's yeah. the today. We have C band. Yeah. That's the tomorrow. Yeah. Looking at the ultra wideband approach and what it's going to include, um, maybe you could kind of speak to it. C band, both for Verizon and AT and T, is is like in that Goldilocks uh, zone of giving you uh, distribu uh, uh, propagation and and capacity, right? It's not as not as far as as low band, but a lot more capacity. Not as much capacity as millimeter wave, but you get a lot more range. Uh, I still think, I still assume you will have uh, you will have problems getting into buildings um, unless your your cell site spacing gets really gets really tight, right? Um, but then everybody is fighting more or less uh, on on you know with e with with similar amounts of weapons at, at their disposal, and and so uh, for for Verizon this is certainly an opportunity to shine. You know, it, it, depending, you know, they used to be the undisputed leader uh, in in network, and that's what they really traded on. Now, you know, it depends on who you ask, which is, uh, you know, and some people in some tests even show them as third, right? Um, it's something uh, very difficult to stomach for anybody who, who, who knows the, the Verizon 1.0 guys, that the Verizon 2.0 guys have... have uh, have given away that network advantage around 5G. But towards the end of a G, <laughs> at least in urban areas, you have network parity. T-Mobile enjoyed that, right? And because, because enough money got poured into the network that your spectrum position no longer matters, right? And the same thing will happen in 5G. You have your early, early lead by, by somebody, because the, the, the whole mix get the whole competitive mix gets reshuffled. And then the question is how good can how how long can you can you save that when 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 does reality catch up? When when does perception catch up to reality? Sort of like an arms race of sorts, like someone gets a bit of a, a leap, yeah. you know, maybe for a year or two years, and then someone else comes in with something or you know, puts their all into a project that works out for them. But typically, from my experience, uh, it takes about, it takes at least one year for the reality on the ground, meaning your network is the same or better, for it to show up in the customer perceptions. I that's right. That's, that's about right, yeah. I think right? you're right. Mm -hmm. And uh, And so... Uh, you know, the Verizon guys need to execute, but traditionally they have shined at, at, at execution. And um, the, the execution is interesting. You bring that up. How about the fixed wireless access ambitions? 5G home, 5G business. They want to, I, I think the number is they're shooting for 15 million households by 2025. I think eight, uh, Timo wants to be in seven to 8 million. So uh, do you think they execute this properly? Do you think that they succeed at reaching these goals? They are quite ambitious. Well, uh, it all depends if the stimulus bill uh, and the, the telecom stimulus bill in, in Congress will get passed or not. There's $40 billion sure. to go sure. around shoring up, uh, shoring up rural and, and suburban uh, fiber deployments, right? And the... And I don't think they can compete with gigabit fiber. No, they cannot. They cannot. They so cannot. As the, the more that stimulus uh, gets delayed or even canceled, we don't know that, right? The better it is for the, for the 5G players, right? Um, 
millimeter 5G, uh, you know, you have a very high reuse pattern because your cell is only, you know, 200 yards wide, which is an advantage mm -hmm. here. You know, I remember, uh, I remember a guy called John, Dr. John Saw. I don't know if you've heard of him, right? I have, yeah. Yeah. Have Dr. John Saw. Uh, he's, he's in a different role today. Just very, so very smart guy. Very good engineer. Chief Technical Officer of Clearwire. And Sprint, also the Sprint, you know, headman. At, at Clearwire, right? 2.5 yeah. gigahertz. And I remember it like yesterday at a at an analyst briefing in New York. He went about went on and on about the, the advantages of 2.5 and that the 2.5 gigahertz network that he's building in Manhattan looks exactly the same like the 700 megahertz network that Verizon is building, but is actually better. And, and, and I listened to him and I completely agree with him. Because one of the things that he said was like here in Manhattan or in other densely populated areas, we are not coverage constrained, but capacity constrained. On top of it, having good uh, coverage, good signal strength is actually a problem. Because in 4G and in 5G, every cell site that my cell site sees is an interferer. And your signal to noise ratio goes to the roof. And so the, seven, the advantages of 700 megahertz are completely wasted here because they have to tone down the power so much. They actually have to tone down the power more than I ha he has to in 2.5. The same is true for the 3.5, right? Just the, I can reverse the logic and say exactly sure. the same. Oh, say yes, like, you know, mm -hmm. so that gives me a lot of hope for, um, for, for the 3.5, as long as you get close enough, as long as you have the cell site density, because you yeah. can build the cell site density, because the buildings and the walls help you to control and mitigate interference, right? Yeah, um, we did get a little bit of disclosure from executive and senior vice presidents on, like from Verizon specifically, they they feel comfortable with their grid. Yeah. You know, they, they spoke to that, and that was one of the things I was concerned about. If you've built your network on an AWS grid, I agree. No, no, no. If it's built on a PCS grid, I don't agree. If, if but if you look at it, look in urban America. I'm I'm talking about urban, right? The story changes suburbia and further out. Sure, I I'm right. speaking from a general standpoint, but like if you're looking yeah, at the urban market, they're going to be heavily investing in millimeter wave. And and C band and C band. No, and I understand. Undoubtedly, but, but we cannot downplay the importance, the offload that the millimeter wave is going to do for them to keep those mid-band channels clear. Yes. For every moment somebody is outside, millimeter wave will do the heavy lifting. We'll, we'll see, right? Uh, but one of We'll the see, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm only speaking to their goal, Roger. Their yeah. goal is to get 50% of urban traffic on millimeter wave. I'm only speaking to their goal. I don't know how it's going to execute. Just Good speaking luck. to the goal. Good luck. It's going to be hard. They're going to have to put yeah, up a lot of nodes. There's, and, you know, I want to be an astronaut. And here we are talking, right? Um, <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Hashtag, I want to be an astronaut. That one was from yeah, Roger. Yeah. 